Hello everybody, Tim Teacher here this week, continuing our weekly reading of Obi Gerbil on the Loose. Last week we learned something important, uh, why Obi was not being fed, right? Rachel, her adopted mother, had written a small note, and on the note uh, had been instructions for Tad, right, her brother Craig's friend, to make sure to feed her. But when Tad opened the kitchen door, the breeze, the wind from opening the door, blew the small piece of paper behind the counter, in between a small crack, right, where the counter was. So Tad did not see the note. We're continuing on this week with Chapter 25, Batteries. You can see here. Obi quickly figured out what must have happened. Rachel had not forgotten Obi. No, not at all. What she had forgotten to do was to put a weight, say, for instance, a salt or pepper shaker, on her note to Tad when she left it on the kitchen table. Evidently, a few hours later, when the boy opened the door to feed the pets, a breeze from outside had blown Rachel's note off the table and into this dark crevice. Obi remembered the day that the Armstrongs had left for vacation. How could she forget it? It was such a traumatic day. She remembered how windy it had been. She also remembered how all the Armstrongs had been strapped in their human mobile and how Mr. Armstrong had been backing the human mobile out of the driveway when Rachel, in the back seat, had leaned forward and told her father something that made him stop the vehicle, as well as frown in exasperation. Rachel and her mother had then come back into the house, but Rachel did not come upstairs. When later, Obi asked Sugar Smacks what Rachel had done when she was in the house, the cat said that Rachel had written something on a piece of paper. Obviously, she had written this note to Tad, telling him to feed Obi. Now Rachel was off on vacation, thinking Obi was happily being fed. It was a huge relief for Obi to know that her adopted mother had not forgotten her, that she really did love her after all. How could Obi have thought otherwise? Well, at least she didn't have to worry about that anymore. But there was something Obi still did have to worry about, getting out of this dark, narrow crevice, not to mention getting fed. Being ever so quiet, Obi crept toward the crevice opening and peered out into the kitchen. The cats were hovering about Tad's legs as he poured dry cat food from a small bag into each of their small bowls. As Obi watched, she realized there was something different about Tad. She couldn't quite put her paw on what it was, though. He was wearing a bandana on his head, just as he always did, and he had on his baggy shorts, grubby sandals, and an oversized t-shirt. And goodness knows his hair was as frizzy as, and wild as ever. And of course, he was wearing his earfo- Wait! That was it! That was what was different about Tad. His earphones. Tad usually had little white earphones plugged into his ears. Today, though, he was listening to music through different earphones. These earphones were saucer-shaped and larger, much larger. Indeed, they covered his entire ears. What's more, the wire that was attached to the earphones led to a round, flat, electronic gizmo that Tad had set on the counter. It was a CD player, like what Rachel listened to. One love, one life, Tad was singing to himself while he listened to his music through the earphones. Having fed the cats, he now stood at the counter, opening a can of dog food with the electric can opener. Tad had a loud, rather nasal, out-of-tone voice, not all that unlike the sound of the electric can opener. You gotta get it together, sang Tad. Obi was so glad to see Tad, it meant her long ordeal was finally over. All she had to do was let Tad see her and he would realize that he needed to feed her, too. Obi stepped out into the kitchen. She glanced over at the cats. They were eating from their bowls with their backs to Obi. Obi began trotting toward Tad. She was halfway across the kitchen floor when she suddenly thought of something. She froze. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? She nearly blurted out loud. I can't let Tad see me. He doesn't know anything about me. If he sees me, he won't know who I am. He might think I'm a mouse, or worse, a rat. 
He might even try to kill me. Alarmed, Obi turned and raced back into the crevice. Standing just out of sight, she continued to watch Tad as she tried to figure out what she could do. Over by the counter, Tad dumped the can of dog food into a large bowl. As he set the can down on the counter, he abruptly stopped singing. He picked up the CD player and examined it. What the? He said with a frown, staring at the CD player. He shook the CD player. Oh, come on, he said in an annoyed voice. Man, I just put in new batteries. Tad stepped over to the drawer where the Armstrongs kept their spoons, forks, and knives. He pulled open the drawer and took out a knife. First, he used the knife to unscrew the little plastic cover on the back of the CD player. Then he used the knife to pry open the cover. He must have applied too much pressure because all of a sudden the small batteries that were in the CD player bounced up into the air. Tad did a little juggling act trying to catch them all. He was unable to catch even one though. The batteries went sliding across the floor, rolling every which way. One even rolled into the dark crevice where Obi was hiding. Oh, for crying out loud, exclaimed Tad. He got down on his hands and knees and began picking up the batteries. He crawled over to the refrigerator and peered into the dark crevice. Obi leaped back into the darkness so she couldn't be seen. Tad stuck his hand into the crevice, feeling around for the battery. Obi's heart fluttered at the sight of this human boy's big hand reaching into her hiding place. She inched forward and kicked the battery toward Tad's finger. His fingers felt the battery and grabbed it. Whew! That was a close one, thought Obi. But as Tad got to his feet, Obi realized she had made a mistake. A huge mistake. Instead of kicking the battery at Tad, she should have kicked Rachel's note to him. Then he would have pulled the note out, read it, and found out what he that he needed to feed her. Gosh darn it all, murmured Obi. She wanted to kick herself. She was so mad. Out in the kitchen, Tad was now going from kitchen drawer to kitchen drawer, pulling each one open. Evidently, he was looking for new batteries to put in his CD player. Tad walked over to the door that led down to the basement. He opened the door, flicked on the overhead light, and disappeared down the stairs. He must be going to Mr. Armstrong's tool room to look for batteries, thought Obi. From her hiding spot, Obi could see the CD player that Tad had left on the kitchen table. She glanced over at the cats. They were still at their bowls, eating. An idea formed in Obi's head. She didn't have much time, but she thought that if she was quick about it and sneakily quiet, she just might be able to pull it off. Chapter 26, A Very Daring Act Obi folded Rachel's note in half with her front paws and put it in her mouth. Being very quiet, she crept out of her hiding spot. The cats were hunched over their bowls with their backs to Obi. Keeping her eyes on them, Obi stole across the floor toward the round kitchen table. She felt like a Jedi Knight sneaking past a bunch of thieving aliens. Only instead of a lightsaber in her mouth, Obi held a note, Rachel's note. When Obi got to the kitchen table, she silently climbed up the leg of one of the kitchen table chairs. When she reached the cane seat of the chair, she grabbed the linen tablecloth that hung down from the side, dug her claws in, and pulled herself up onto the table. Tad's CD player was lying face up near Rachel's stack of CDs. Obi's plan was to leave the note on top of the CD player so that Tad would discover it when he came back into the kitchen. Obi's heart thumped wildly as she stepped close to the CD player. She placed her paw on it to set the note down. A very unexpected and scary thing happened then. Obi stepped on one of the buttons on the CD player and the round lid that covered the CD abruptly flipped open, revealing the CD inside. It startled Obi so much that she gasped and leaped back. She shot a quick glance at the cats. They were still at their bowls, munching happily away. Luckily, they had not heard anything. Obi was about to push the lid to the CD player back down when she had the most brilliant idea. If she were to remove the CD that Tad had been listening to and replace it with Rachel's note, there would be no way Tad would miss finding the note. There'd be no chance, for instance, that a breeze might blow it off the table again and onto the floor, or Tad would miss seeing it for a second time. With Rachel's note still in her mouth, Obi took the disc out of the CD player. This wasn't quite as easy as she thought it would be, 
As Obi quickly discovered, a gerbil's paws are not exactly made for handling CDs. Holding the disc in her front paws, Obi placed it down on the table. Then she dropped Rachel's note into the round, hollow opening of the CD player where Tad's CD had been. She shut the lid on top of Rachel's note. Perfect, thought Obi. As Obi turned to leave, her gaze fell upon Tad's CD, who was lying on the table, uncased and unprotected. If Tad was anything like Craig, and as far as Obi could tell, he was a lot like Craig, Tad would not be very happy about seeing his CD exposed like this. Obi remembered one time when Rachel had forgotten to put one of Craig's CDs back into its case. Craig had gone ballistic, yelling and screaming at Rachel and telling her that if his CD got scratched, she was in big, big trouble. The last thing Obi wanted was to annoy Tad. She needed his help too badly. She needed him to feed her. Obi hurried over and picked up the CD. Now that she had it in her paws, though, what was she to do with it? She glanced around. The only other CDs on the table were the ones that belonged to Rachel. While Obi stood there, puzzling over what to do, she caught sight of a gray, furry thing just outside the kitchen window. No, oh, no! It was that Daffy Squirrel again. He was perched on the branches of a young dogwood tree that grew out in the backyard. The squirrel was gaping in at Obi, his jaw hanging open, and the most incredulous look on his face. You didn't need to be an expert on squirrels to figure out what was going on inside that scrambled brain. The squirrel obviously thought Obi was stealing Tad's CD. Obi shook her head to let the squirrel know it wasn't what it looked like. Just then, though, Obi heard human footsteps clomping up the basement stairs. Tad was on his way back up to the kitchen. In a panic, Obi stepped over to Rachel's stack of music CDs. By this point, Obi was such a bundle of nerves, she was no longer thinking clearly. She just wanted to get rid of Tad's CD and get off the kitchen table as quickly as possible. She popped open the square plastic case. Obi gasped into surprise. There was a CD already in the case, which made sense, of course, when you thought about it. But who had time to think about it? Not Obi. Obi yanked Rachel's CD out of its case and replaced it with Tad's CD. As she closed the top of the case, she could hear Tad's footsteps on the stairs growing louder and louder. Obi stared at the disc that she was holding in her paws. What was she to do with this CD? By now, Tad's footsteps were almost to the top of the basement stairs. Obi had run out of time. She had no choice but to drop Rachel's CD right there on the table and flee. With her heart beating fast, Obi darted across the table and leaped. Sweetie Smoochkins, being closest, heard Obi land on the floor. The cat lifted her head from her bowl and peered curiously over at Obi. It took her a moment to realize whom she was staring at. Her eyes widened with rage. Hey, it's Fuzzball! Meow! cried Sweetie Smoochkins as she whipped around and sprang toward Obi. Terrified, Obi scrambled to her feet and dove into the crevice between the refrigerator and cabinet. She made it just in the nick of time. Another second, and Obi would have been a very tasty after-breakfast treat for Sweetie Smoochkins. Next week, we will finish our story with Chapter 27, and then we will go ahead all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed our reading this week. It was wonderful reading with you. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>